This story time is from a follower and she really needs advice. By the way, we're calling her Wilhelmina. Wilhelmina is 23 and she takes care of her mom. Her mom is obese, so she can't do things like wash herself, feed herself. She can't even barely move. Her life is just surrounded by just making sure her mom is okay. But Wilhelmina has been feeling depressed because she doesn't go out with her friends and she mostly just spends her time inside the house with her mom. She really wants to move across the country and have a more exciting life and just live for herself, but she just feels so bad leaving her mom behind. And she's afraid that something might happen to her while she's gone because no one is there to help take care of her mom. She needs some advice on how to work out the situation, so please comment down below some advice. Here's another toxic best friend story time. And ladies, you're going to want to hear this one. So, one day in school, I met this boy, which we're going to call Tyrone. We became friends, like really, really close friends. And over time, he asked me to be his girlfriend. And of course, I said yes. Because, you know, I already had a secret crush on him already. And, you know, everything was cute for a while, you know, until he started to act very distant. And I was very confused. He wouldn't give me hugs, kisses, and he wouldn't spend no time to really see me. Until randomly, his girl best friend had told me that he was cheating on me. She sent me message screenshots, but I didn't know they were fake at the time. And seeing that, I was like, "Up, oh, no, I'm done, and I broke up with him. For a whole year, I didn't speak to him. And weirdly, he started dating his best friend. But then we started to talk again, but just as friends. Ended up finding out that he didn't cheat on me. And his now girlfriend broke us up. Story time on how I found out the FBI was spying on me for seven months. At the time this was going on, I was a junior in high school. And in the mornings, I would walk to school because my school was only like a couple blocks down. But I always noticed there was like a gray minivan always going the same direction as me. So I always assumed that it was probably another kid from my school. And his or her parents was driving them to school. And one day, I left home early because I wanted to get food from the store. So I went to a corner store and when I came out, that same minivan was parked outside of the store. And then I was like, okay. Thought that that was weird, but I walked back to school but i didn't go the normal way that i usually go i took a different shortcut that day because i didn't want to be late for school and halfway there that same minivan pops up again and it went the opposite direction of me because it was a one-way street by the time i got to school the minivan was parked on the side of my school i of course ran inside the building and halfway through class i forgot about the whole situation running out of time i'll post part two right after this Part 2 on how I found out the FBI was watching me for 7 months straight. For the first 3-4 to four months, a minivan was watching me and when I started to catch on, they stopped showing up. But what got weird is when I got to school, every day my friends would just ask me weird questions about what I was doing, where I was going. And it was weird because I felt like I was being interrogated. After a couple months passed down, still being questioned, and I get called down to the principal's office. And I'm scared because I'm like, am I in trouble? What did I do? When I walk in, there's detectives sitting down. They then sat me down, started asking me questions. They laid out a bunch of pictures of me. And this is kind of how I found out they was watching me for so long. They asked me if my name was my real name. Am I the age of my birth certificate? Asked me if I was an immigrant. And I was so confused. And come to find out, they thought I was a mass murderer. As in like they thought that I was the guy that was abducting women. When I told them this wasn't me, I didn't do this stuff man. They did some background check, they got my family involved. My parents even wanted to sue because they didn't even know this was going on. Because at the time I was a minor and I was getting questioned. Story time on my business lunch May 3rd at 12pm today. So if you're watching this after 12pm today, standard eastern time, sis we're live. But I'm so freaking excited. I've literally have been talking about this all month. You guys have seen it. Literally, like, I use all my products in all my videos. The palettes, the concealer, the lip glosses, the lashes, the glitter, to even what I'm using now, which is my non-toxic, all-natural micellar water, handmade with love. <laughs> Just to let you guys know, all my products are vegan and cruelty free. And as of now, May 3rd to May 8th, all of my products are going to be on sale. Everything. On top of that, if you subscribe to the emailing list, you already know you're getting a 10% off. Did I forget to mention that I have a rewards program too? Girl, if you don't, if you don't hop on one. But the link is in my bio. I've never been so excited to say that in my life. But the link is in the bio. The link is in the bio. 
story time and I need to vent, okay? I hate it when in a professional setting, someone uses their position of power to flirt with you or to get your phone number or whatever. Particularly if they're doing this to people who identify as a woman. So I'm moving out of my apartment and a guy came over today to do the inventory check. Basically, inventory check is when they come over, they check your flat, and they see if you get your deposit back. Like They look at the state of your apartment. So the guy comes over to do that, and instantly, instantly, he starts flirting with me, like right away, right off the bat. So I felt like I was in a really uncomfortable position, because on the one hand, I want to be polite and like nice back, because I want my deposit back, and I'm scared that if I'm not polite and like friendly towards him, I'm not going to get my deposit, because he's going to write a bad review. But on the other hand, he's flirting, so I don't want to like cross the line and make him think i'm also flirting when i'm not flirting i'm just trying to be nice because i want my money back sir anyway so one of the first thing he says is that he's eastern european he's really traditional da, da, da. and then he spoke to me for two hours he didn't check my apartment he just spoke to me for two hours and like was asking questions about if i want kids my views on marriage like literally asking questions that you ask on a date this isn't a date. This is a professional setting. You're supposed to be checking my apartment. Why are you treating it like a date and putting me in this spot like that? Anyway, after two hours, he finally starts checking my apartment and he's checking my kitchen and he asked me if I cooked. And I said, yeah, I cook. And he goes, wow, you would make a great wife. Stop. Why? Many more comments like this came along throughout the inventory check, guys. So later on, there was a tiny stain somewhere, so I was cleaning the stain. And he goes, oh, see, another reason why you'd make a great wife. Oh, because I can clean and cook, I'd make a great wife. And also, like, why are you saying I'd make, like, that's so uncomfortable for me. Like, stop, why? Mm. Sorry, I'm still, like, riled up over this, clearly. And then another thing that happened, he had to flip over all the sofa cushions because he had to see if there were stains on the other side. So when he was putting them back, I decided to help put them back because there's like nine different like sofa cushions. So I was like, might as well help so it goes quicker. So as I'm putting the pillows back, he's like, you're really sweet, you know, you're so sweet. <laughs> Again, I'm already uncomfortable, please stop. Finally, everything finishes and I go to my neighbor's flat because I had to give her something and he was waiting for the elevator right next to me because her flat is right next to the elevator and while he's waiting for the elevator he goes we should go we should go for coffee sometime would you like to go to coffee what would you say let's go to coffee what am i supposed to say like obviously i want to say no but i don't want him to write a bad report because i said no because we all know that could happen so like i feel like i have to say yes to go on a date with him when like i don't want to go on a date but i need my deposit back so i guess i'm going to coffee My fiance doesn't know that my ex-boyfriend pays for all my bills and my student loans. Am I the asshole for not telling him? Although I do love my fiance, he really never offers to pay for things unless I ask him to. And not that I need him to pay, but it would be nice to know that he has my back for once. After a year of dating, we got engaged. And we've been engaged now for two months. I will say my fiance is definitely one of my best friends. I literally can tell this man anything and he never judges me. He's also my hype man and he's also super funny and we laugh like all day long. So this is the part where I have to tell you about my ex. My ex and I were together for four years. He is a very, very successful man, very rich and very handsome. And the reason we broke up is because we would get into really bad fights. He was extremely jealous and so was I. The relationship was absolutely completely toxic. So it's not like I want to get back with him, but he was the kind of guy that paid for everything. Even if I had the money to pay for shit, he would always offer to pay for me. We were so attracted to each other, but we were crazy. When we broke up, my ex told me that he would always help me financially no matter what. He's obviously kept his promise to this day. Part two is up. My fiance does not know that my ex pays for my my bills and my student loans. Am I the asshole for not telling him? After my crazy toxic relationship with my ex, he promised he would always help me financially. So in 2020 when I lost my job, I hit him up and he sent me money right away. He sent me 10,000 to start with. I paid bills and some of my student loans off. And three months later, I asked him for another 10 grand, but he actually sent me 30 instead. This held me over for almost a full year. This was right around the time that I met my now fiance. When my fiance and I started dating, of course I was not gonna tell him that my ex was paying for my stuff. He just assumed that I had money saved up. Luckily last year, I did get rehired at my old job but with a pay cut when my fiance and i moved in together i asked him if he could pay most of the rent and he said no he said he was only able to pay for half of the rent and he literally splits everything this man even makes me split the cost of toilet paper i get a venmo request from him almost every single day every time he buys something i'm trying not to let it bother me but at the same time is he going to be able to support me when i'm pregnant i asked him if he would be willing to help me financially he said no Part three is up
My fiance doesn't know that my ex is paying for my student loans and my bills. Am I the asshole for not telling him? That's when I asked my fiance if he could help me out financially. This man said no. I was actually shocked. I started to cry and I told him exactly what I thought. First off, he makes me split everything and never invites me out to dinner. Like, never offers to pay for anything. Even if I wanted like a cookie or something at Starbucks, he doesn't pay for that. I have offered to pay for things for him. Sometimes I'll buy dinner for us on the way home and I don't ask him to pay me. I was really close to confessing to him that my ex was paying for a lot of stuff for me. But that's when my fiance told me that he just thinks it's fair for me to pay for my own things. I asked him what about when I'm pregnant? What if I can't work? He says that I can just pay for my stuff with my own savings. Um, then I asked him if he would be able to pay for all the kids things. He said no. That I would have to pay for exactly half of the kids things. And I know what you're thinking. The fact that we didn't have this conversation before we got engaged is crazy. Now I really want to tell him about my ex. And I'm even thinking about getting back with my crazy ex. My fiance is just so blah now to me. Like I can't even look at him the same way anymore. I know I'm not being unreasonable. It's not like I'm asking him to pay for everything. What should I do? Have you ever been invited out by a guy and his ex ended up being at the same place as you both? Get ready with me while I tell you the time a guy invited me out to a party and his ex ended up being at the same freaking party. Big backstory, this guy and I met via Twitter, but technically I already knew who he was because we have the same mutual friends. Let's give this guy the name Ricardo. The only reason Ricardo and I started to speak was because he posted on Twitter a very depressing tweet. And if you know me, I am so caring, I'm so attentive and if I see something that's very alarming, I'm going to do something about it. I sent that same tweet via like DM. I asked him, I was like, are you okay? If you ever need anyone to talk to, I know you don't know me, but I'm here for you. He ended up opening a little bit up to me and a couple weeks later, he ended up inviting me out. So at this point, I know a little bit about this guy because we've been going back and forth for like three weeks we finally end up meeting up and i think we went to like la michoacana or something it was just something like super level like super chill he basically started to open up more to me while we were you know having like the car conversations and then when i dropped him off at the crib that is when he was like hey um you should come to this party with me funny thing is because i already knew who his friends were I already knew about the party, but because he invited me, I was like, oh, maybe I'll just go with him. I'll be his plus one. So at this point, the party isn't for another month and him and I are obviously like still texting. And during this period, since him and I were still texting, I feel like he ended up catching feelings. And, and just to throw it out there, I never flirted once with him. I feel like he caught feelings because I was just there for him and I was just hearing him out. There was definitely like, no flirting on my end fast forward it's two days before the party he ends up messaging me and telling me that he really likes me how he wants to pursue more than a friendship with me and i was like oh. i wasn't fully on board with wanting to have a relationship with him or even the thought of pursuing him but i also didn't want to give him the benefit of the doubt either because i know he was going through it so I gave in a little bit and I was like, let's just take it slow. Now it's the day of the party. Because a lot of my homegirls were also going to this party, he didn't end up coming to pick me up because I told him that I would just carpool with the homegirls. So one, we arrived to this party and I text him that I am here and the first red flag was that he didn't come outside to get me. I'm supposed to be your plus one. I know we have mutual friends, but you invited me. At least you can come and get me, right? I already wasn't on board on wanting to talk to him. I knew it was a perfect opportunity to see how he would act around his friends, especially having alcohol in his system. Welcome to part two of the time a guy invited me out to a party and his ex ended up being at the same party as well. If you have yet to watch part one, definitely go check that one out and then come back to part two. Ricardo never came to the front to get me. I just walked in with the homegirls and we just sat at a random table. As apparently Ricardo's plus one, it took him a good 20 minutes to actually come to the table to say hi to me and the rest of the group of friends. Grupo starts to play and everyone is starting to get up to dance. At this point, the girls and I start to head to the dance floor and I already didn't even care anymore what Ricardo was doing because he was already being a little bit sus and weird from the moment that I got to the party, so he wasn't even my concern anymore. As we're on the dance floor, the girls start to give like each other a weird look and i end up catching on and i was like what's going on because i can't hear what they're saying because the grupo is playing i start to look in the direction that their heads are turned and you won't believe what i see this guy who freaking invited me to be his plus one 
was literally dancing with a girl. But it wasn't even like they were dancing grupo or banda. This guy was like carrying her like he lifted her up from like her butt area and was like dancing with her like if she was a baby. And I was like, oh, what the heck? I look at my friends in disbelief and we end up going to the table. I asked them if they knew who that girl was because I didn't know if she was a friend, if she was an ex because him and I never really talked about girls or like past relationships. It so happened that my homegirl knew exactly who she was. Right away, my homegirl was like, you have to cut him off. And I was like, absolutely. She ends up telling me that that is his ex. And I was like, bro, what the hell? Like, again? You know how many freaking times I've dealt with an ex in somebody else's life? Like, it's so annoying. At this point, this boy was so drunk. He was long gone that I don't even think he knew exactly what he was doing. So I ended up needing to use a restroom. In order to get to the restroom, I had to pass by his table. And at this point, if you don't care, then I don't care either. Like, what's up? As I'm passing by his table to go to the restroom, this girl is also there sitting on his lap. And he's like filling her in. Like, you know, like, bro, keep that shit private. But anyways, obviously, they were too drunk to not care. But he ends up seeing me and he goes, like, yeah, motherfucker, I'm still here. He ends up coming to my table once he sees that I'm back from the restroom and he starts to like pass over the shots like boy this is your way to redeem yourself like do better actually don't even do better because I don't even care for you anymore I end up stepping away from the table because I honestly wanted nothing to do with him and I know he was just gonna try the absolute his absolute hardest to try to get me back I'm not one of those girls to go back I'm so sorry and if you do know Tino Shade <laughs> to each their own he eventually starts to give up because he knew that i wasn't giving him the time of the day and he ended up going to the front of the house and i remember one of his best friends comes up to me and she tried to like butter me up and she's like dude you're so pretty you came with ricardo you're his plus one right and i just started to laugh and i was like girl i'm not the one i get word that apparently ricardo is out in the front like sobbing and literally like five minutes after i get a snapchat from him and i open it and i just leave him on red and so then he keeps on messaging me and i keep on leaving him on red and then finally he was like can you just come to the front so we can talk and i was like you know what i'm actually really invested to what this guy has to say because he already looks like a fool what else is he gonna say to make him look like an idiot so as i'm walking to the front he sees me and he like tries to give me a hug and i was like dude like back up and he was like no i really like you and i was like boy like how do you still have it in you to come and tell me all of these things while i see you with another girl like on her my boy during this conversation he still has the audacity to say hey like do you want to come over to the house like i'll tell my mom that you're coming over and i was like <laughs> i had enough of what he had to say because it was honestly just bs to me so i ended up leaving and when i got home i unfollowed him on all social media platforms and i blocked his number and karma ended up biting him in the ass because come to find out that apparently this ex or this girl who he had history with ended up getting into a relationship a month later and it wasn't with ricardo so technically he took two l's and <laughs> that's it also really quickly if you guys made it to the end i want to say thank you guys so much for the love and support i do have a lot more story times coming up so don't forget to follow me because i just love the interaction i love interacting with you guys I feel like you guys are like my besties and i'm just like on facetime with you guys telling you a cheese mess so thank you guys always for the love story time about one of the most horrific experiences i ever had as an introvert when I was 15, I went to a basketball game with my dad, and it was a Lakers game to be specific. At one point during the game during intermission, the kiss cam came on, which as most of you know, the kiss cam is just a camera that zooms in on couples and asks them to kiss in front of the entire arena. It's like on a big screen. So the kiss cam is on, it's going to a bunch of people, they're all kissing, it's really, really cute. And then at one point, my face and my dad's face was on the kiss cam. So it said kiss with a heart with both of our faces in the heart. So we're kind of there like in shock, but we're like, okay, well, it's going to move on. Because usually when couples don't kiss or people don't kiss, the camera just moves on because it assumes they're not going to kiss. The thing is, the camera didn't move on. And the entire arena started to chant, kiss, 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 kiss. And after 40 seconds of chanting kiss without us kissing, the entire arena started to boo at us for not kissing. Entire arena booing at us. 15 years old, introvert. My dad asked to kiss. Story time, and this is actually my mom's story. 
When my mom was 15, she was a boarding school student, except her school wasn't only a boarding school, it was also a daytime school. So students could choose to either be a boarding school student or a daytime school student. This one night, my mom, her boarding school friend, and their daytime school friend were hanging out, and around 7 p.m., the daytime school friend wanted to go home. Back then, cell phones were nothing, obviously, so the three of them had to leave campus to go to a phone booth to call a cab for her. So they leave the school, and they walk alongside it and pass the forest, because right next to the school was a forest, and as they're walking, a man that they don't recognize passes them. Then a few seconds later, a girl that they do recognize who went to the school also passes them, so they say hi to her, and they keep walking to the phone booth. Eventually, they reach the phone booth and they call a cab, and as they're waiting for a cab, suddenly, they hear a girl screaming and a bunch of leaves rustling. So they're like, oh my god, what is happening? Then a few seconds later, the guy that had passed them suddenly runs past them really, really fast. I have to do part two. Part two. So the guy ran past them just as the cab arrived. So my mom and her boarding school friend put their daytime school friend into the cab, and the two of them walked back towards the forest to see if something happened. But no one was there. So the two of them then walked back to campus and went to the cafeteria because it was dinner time. And in the cafeteria, they saw the girl that had passed them just sitting at a table crying. So they went up to her to ask if she was okay. And when they went up to her, they saw that she had a knife mark on her neck and a knife mark on her wrist. So they were like, oh my God, we have to take her to the principal. They take the girl, bring her to the principal and she tells them what happened. And the principal calls the cops and they take all their statements. Apparently the guy had grabbed the girl, taken her into the forest and held a knife to her neck and told her to be quiet. But because the girl knew that my mom and her friends were nearby, she started screaming and wouldn't stop screaming. That's why the guy let her go and ran off. Eventually, the guy ended up being arrested and put in jail for having raped girls as young as seven years old. My husband in five years asked me for a threesome with my best friend and she agreed. I, 26 female, met my husband, 35 male, seven years ago, and we have been married for five of those years. I love my husband and all that he's done for me, but I fear that my marriage and my relationship with my best friend is now over. Not to mention, I just found out that I'm pregnant and this only started happening after I told my husband. He was very much on board with having a child with me and we've been trying for around six months. For context, my best friend, 28 female, Mia, knew my husband before me and they were incredibly close before I even knew him. When I first met my husband, I suspected there was something going on between them, but they always denied it. However, they admitted while they were drunk that they were indeed sleeping together before I got with my husband. Even though it's not important now, it still plays on my mind, you know? Especially considering what just happened. Two weeks ago, my husband suggested a threesome for the first time and I was already not on board with it. I quickly said no and hoped he'd never bring it up again. Two days after, he suggested it again and I once again declined. He asked that night after we had sex once again and I said no. After that, he stopped asking me and I thought that was the end of it. However, three days ago, he asked me out to lunch and I was pretty excited considering he never takes me out on dates anymore. When we got to the restaurant, my best friend was sitting there and was confused because he never mentioned that she'd be there. The vibe was weird from the start to be honest, but I tried not to think of it. Halfway through the lunch, my husband asked me again. I want to consider the idea of a threesome again and I thought it would be a good idea if Mia was involved. I didn't know what to say. I asked me if she knew about this and she said yes and that she'd known about this plans for over a month. I was devastated. I said no, paid for my meal and left my car. I feel so betrayed and hurt right now and I have no words. This man is meant to be the father of my child but I can't even look at him. I've been staying with my mom and he's been phoning and calling me dramatically and saying that he'll drop it. Mia has been spamming me too, saying the same thing. I don't know what to do. My boyfriend said I don't truly love him if I'm not letting him live his life, including flirting with other girls and dating others. We've been together on and off for five years. Met in 2018, and three months later, I found out that he was talking to someone else. Then he went to another country, and we were long distance. I've always worried that he would leave me. I'm not good enough because of my mental health. I found out that he was going on dates with another girl in said country from a gut feeling. Ended up with him confessing that he wants to break up. We broke up in June 2019, but after stalking, I realized that they had been dating since March 2019. I was turned and became obsessive of their relationship. We didn't speak for a whole year. Reconnected early 2021 after they broke up. Started dating and it was okay, until I broke down knowing that he was going on an exchange to another country this year. I told him my fears about him finding someone else and replacing me. He said I'm too insecure and he doubted if I really love him. He said love should be unconditional and I should be happy if he's happy. He said he wants freedom and he wants me to be in his life forever. But why can't I be happy if he's happy dating other girls? Why would I limit his life? He said it to me as if it's a favor that he didn't see anyone else this past two years. He even told me out of frustration that he would just rather live his life, date and sleep with other girls and if I truly loved him then I would stay. I can't let go of this and I'm feeling extremely depressed. All my friends are polyamorous so I suspect that they would think that this is okay and I'm an asshole for limiting my boyfriend's life experience. So am I in the wrong for feeling this way? Story time, when I got robbed by my sister's boyfriend. So when school started, my sister entered 11th grade and I entered 7th. She was excited because my parents said that she was allowed to date when she got to her junior year. And immediately she got with this dude named Tony. My parents didn't know much about him, but I knew him because he would be in the neighborhood with his gang while me and my friends were playing outside. He used to hotwire cars. He was in and out of juvie. And one time I heard he jumped a kid named Alexander because he had the newest Jordans. I was so confused on why my sister wanted him, but I ignored it. One to two months go by and Halloween comes up. So me and my friends get dressed up to get candy. I was a ghost. I know cliche, but when you're in the hood, you gotta do what you gotta do. 
When we got done trick-or-treating, it was time to go home. Then, out of nowhere, a group of guys ran up on us and was trying to take our candy. So, I pushed one of the guys away from us and someone pulls a strap out on me. And it's Tony. Part 2 is coming soon. Part 2 of how I got robbed by my sister's boyfriend. Like I said, a group of guys were after us and tried to take our Halloween candy. When I pushed one of the guys away, someone pulls a strap out on me. And it's Tony. I was so scared at that moment, I literally peed my pants. I really thought that that was my last day. Then he snatches a blanket off of me and was like, Oh, so you must think you tough. And I said, no. And he says, tell your boys to share. That's all we want. When we gave them our candy, they ran off with it. And me and my friends were so upset because it took us four hours to collect all of that candy. When I finally get back home, my sister sees me and asks, where's your candy and why is your pants wet? So I tried to explain to her what happened. Then out of nowhere, Tony pops up and walks into our living room. I look at him in shock because this man literally held a G-U-N to my head and now he's in my house. He walks up to me and says, here, you can have my candy. And it's literally the same candy he stole from me earlier. And I just stared at him. My sister's like, take the candy, stop acting like a weirdo. When I take the candy, she hugs and kisses him. And says, that's so sweet of you. When I was younger, there was a girl I knew who lived in our neighborhood. None of the kids liked her because they claimed that she stinked and acted weird. When they talked about her, I kind of felt bad. So I became friends with her. Yeah, of course, I got the, why do you hang out with her? But she really wasn't all that bad. But her scent, they were kind of right about that. One day, she invites me over to her house, and she was very excited because she told me I was the first person to ever come over. And I felt so honored, so I went. But when I went into her house, it smelled very bad. Almost nauseating, but I didn't say anything because I didn't want to be rude. She had a lot of uncles that lived with her family. Honestly, it was like four to five families in one house, to be honest. But she first introduced me to her stepmom. I said hi to her, but she just stared at me in disgust. Then we went to her room to play. As it got later, I told her I needed to go home. But she begged me to stay longer because she was scared. I told her I'd come tomorrow, and she just starts crying. She runs into her bed and falls into her sheets, which lifted her skirt. There were bruises all over her thighs. Let me know if y'all want a part two. Part two about the girl I know who lived in my neighborhood. So it's late, and it's time for me to go home. She said she was scared and starts crying. Then she runs into her bed and flops into her sheets. Her skirt lifted, and there were bruises all all around her thighs. I ask her, what happened? She looks down and quickly pulls her skirt over her bruises. I ask, did someone do that to you? And she says she can't tell me. I ask why. She responds, if I do, they're going to hurt me. So I ran downstairs to her stepmom and told her what I saw. She sits and laughs in my face. I was so confused and asked her, are you gonna help her? And she tells me that little hoe can help herself and that I actually should be going home. So I went into the living room where her uncles were and told them. One of them had said, that's why that girl don't need to be bringing random folks into the house and runs upstairs to her room. One of the other uncles asks, you want to get popped? I shook my head in fear and said no. And he yells at me, telling me to go home. From there, I ran home and never came back. And after that day, she never came back outside. It's been seven years. To this day, I wonder what happened to her. Hello, everyone. Get ready with me while I tell you the time an old cold worker sent three girls to fight me because I didn't give him a chance. If you're wondering why I'm getting ready, today is my birthday and I'm going to brunch with my Nina. So I'm really, really excited because I don't care for my birthday, so the fact that I got invited out is a little bit exciting. We're going to call this old coworker Jonathan. I remember my first day on this job. Honestly, I didn't even work. I was just getting introduced to everyone who worked there and basically like what the system was about. As I was walking through the building with my trainer, I would run into different co-workers and that is basically when I would meet them. It wasn't like we were in a group and like, hey guys, this is Ashley. She's our new um, employee. It was never like that. It was just kind of like, if I see you, I'm going to say hi. I was walking the building. We run into Jonathan. So Jonathan stops what he's doing and he comes to fully introduce himself. It wasn't like, oh, hey, my name is Jonathan. He was like, hi, my name is Jonathan. If you need, ever need any help or you have any questions, I'm here. Like he was doing the absolute most. Once Jonathan leaves me and my trainer, I quote the trainer because honestly, she didn't really train me. This girl and I continue to walk the building and we run into some of the upper management and they were just talking to me. And little do you know, I turn around and I see Jonathan again. And Jonathan goes, hey, don't forget me. Like, I'm Jonathan. If you need something, like, I'm right here. Don't hesitate. That's a little backstory of who Jonathan is and how we met. Now let's fast forward to maybe like six months or a year later into me working here. So because Jonathan and I worked in the same section, there was absolutely no way of avoiding this kid. He 
would come to me all the freaking time every morning every second of the day wherever i was at he would literally go and try to look for me to start conversation try to get at me try to claim me it was ridiculous didn't have my privacy with him because even when i would go out for my lunch or break this guy would literally go to my car and try to start a conversation with me like dude it's it's enough that i already see you inside the building for eight hours and you still want to come out here and try to find a way to conversate with me like leave me alone a few days later i remember another co-worker came up to me and he was like hey are you and jonathan seeing each other are you guys dating and i was like what no why and he was like oh it's because he's saying that you're his girlfriend he's out here claiming you and i was like oh hell no before i confronted jonathan i went to another co-worker and i asked him if it's true that jonathan has been claiming me and saying that i'm his girl and sure enough that co-worker also says yes so i was like all right i'm gonna do something about this because i knew it wasn't a rumor i ended up going to jonathan i almost said his name <laughs> i ended up going to jonathan and i was like why are you going around and telling people that i'm your girl why are you claiming me why are you spreading false rumors this is not cool everything to this guy was a joke so me bringing this conversation up was irrelevant because he just started to laugh and deny everything and i was like you know what i don't even know why i'm asking him because he's not gonna say yes I remember before walking away when I confronted him the first well one of the first things I asked him also was if he had a girlfriend because I am so traumatized from the past of men who have girls trying to get at me because that is one super annoying and two you're putting me into some drama that I have no business in like all you could have done is been honest there's one thing about men that I've learned is they're gonna have the damn audacity really quickly you guys I've been getting asked what shimmer I'm using for my inner corners and my lid this is the one it's from NB in the shade elegant I was saying I basically asked him the question and he denied it but honestly at this point I don't trust men anymore, so I didn't believe one word that came out of his mouth. I remember a week later, I was outside on lunch with some co-workers, and Jonathan pops up. I was going to leave the moment Jonathan arrived, but I was with other co-workers, so it's not like him and I were alone, so I just ended up staying, and plus the lunch was about to be over too, so I just wanted to finish my lunch and conversate with my other co-workers. As I'm chatting with my co-workers, Jonathan's phone ends up ringing and Jonathan has always been the type of person that whenever he answers his phone he's always answering on speaker because his phone was on speaker I was able to listen to a little bit of the phone call and you guys won't believe what the call was about if you're wondering which you guys probably all are basically the part that I heard was oh this is a call from whatever prison from his friend's name and i was like yo someone's calling him from prison it's probably one of his boys i need to pay attention more to this conversation than this conversation his boy ends up asking him about a girl he goes hey how is this person doing i forgot her name but he was like hey how is this person doing and in my head i was like you got to be joking i ended up asking jonathan again if he has a girlfriend and he denies it and i was like Jonathan, are you sure? Because I just heard your whole ass conversation and your homie just asked you about a girl. Who is this girl? See, if you weren't trying to get at me or claim me, then I wouldn't be asking you this because it's none of my concern. But because you're trying to get at me knowing that you have a girlfriend or there's another girl in the picture, you got me effed up. In my opinion, I have the right to ask this question. In the very beginning, Jonathan has always lied to me and as a girl, I've always had that gut feeling. So I knew I wasn't going to get it out of him. So I asked another coworker that I was extremely close to and this coworker would tell me everything. So I basically asked him if he knew if Jonathan had a girl and he just smiled. And I was like, you know what? I know you don't want to tell me, but that smell says enough. A week later, I'm already keeping my distance from this Jonathan guy because there's a lot of information that I found out and I just don't want anything to do with him. I never wanted anything to do with him from the very beginning, but because he's my coworker and I knew I had to see him every single day, I just kept it cool with him because I did not want to go and show up to work feeling so awkward. So I was ignoring him and I feel like the more you ignore a man, the more he's going to try and be all up on your ass. I ended up getting a text message from a person that worked there 
and this person goes where are you immediately when i got that text i was on high alert because this co-worker and i never spoke to so the fact that you're asking me where i'm at and you're telling me to stay where i'm at i know there's something wrong or there's something going on he basically meets me at the location where i'm at and he goes where are you parked and i was like outside in the front why it was like there's a car outside with three girls their license plate is covered up park next to you and they're waiting for you to get out of work and i was like huh i was like they're here for me i was like are you sure because i'm not a problematic person and i don't have beef with anyone so i honestly was just like are you sure they're for me because i didn't believe it i questioned this co-worker again and i'm like are you sure they're here for me and he was like yes and i was like why would there be three girls here to fight me i was like i don't even talk to anybody and i was like really thinking i was like do i have beef with anybody like outside of work and i didn't so whenever he told me that right away the only thing i thought of was jonathan bringing these girls i wasn't afraid i ended up walking to the front to go see this car that apparently is parked next to me and has no license plate and there's three girls in there waiting to fight me a co-worker that i was super cool with at that time ended up seeing me that i was walking to the front and apparently he also was informed about the girls and how they were here for me so he did everything to stop me and not go outside to get my ass beat when this co-worker friend told me the name of the girls it instantly rung a bell because remember i told you earlier that in the phone call where his homie called him from prison he asked him for a girl so that same name was brought up <coughs> and i was like bruh this is jonathan's girl or his ex so apparently jonathan and this girl were on and off but she would still go over to his house and i guess she's seen messages from um jonathan and i but it, jonathan and i never were like flirty it was just like messages um saying if he finished like this order it was just like work related right but i guess because she's seen that there was a girl in his phone she just decided to do her own research the coworker who went out to talk to these girls didn't let me basically leave until they left like the premises because then he kicked them out and they ended up just going outside on the other block so obviously like we knew they were still there and they refused to like let me get my ass beat which i appreciate because dude i would have got my ass beat it would have been three against one like be for real i finally went home for the night and a couple hours later i got a message from a text now number <laughs> and it basically said hey what's up b ass ash and i was like okay whatever like i'm not about to respond to this because i already know exactly who it is the girls ended up coming back a couple days later still trying to fight me and if you're wondering it was basically this guy's girlfriend and two of her, her homegirls and some of my coworkers ended up seeing that same car and the security basically kicked them out and i think at one point they also made a police report um, and then after that, they just never ended up showing up. In regards to Jonathan, I blocked him on everything. Ever since I moved to, out to LA, I don't run into anybody. And also, Jonathan ended up getting fired because he got into some more drama. So they just thought it was better off to let him go because he was extremely problematic. But yeah, guys, that is the time where an old co-worker called three girls to come and fight me. This is my little makeup and outfit for my birthday brunch. Thank you guys always for the love and support. I'm gonna be back hopefully tomorrow with some more story times. If you guys did not follow me, don't forget to follow me because these story times are getting juicy, Miss Girl. I love you guys. Story time about how I caught my husband cheating on me with our very young nanny. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I was sending me on Instagram. I'm 45 years old and my husband is 10 years younger than me. When we first got married, my friends kept telling me not to marry someone so much younger. They told me that he would eventually cheat and leave me for someone younger. I refused to believe this hope because my husband and I really loved each other. Or at least I thought. We met at a party a few years ago and he made the first move right away. He asked me out on a date and a few weeks later we became boyfriend and girlfriend. A few years after that we got married and after years of trying we finally got pregnant and had twins. They are both two years old now. My husband's job requires him to travel a lot. I own a really big salon and business is good. So we have a pretty good life and are able to afford a lot of things for our kids. Since my husband travels, my schedule has to be really flexible. I take care of the kids in the morning and then I go off to work, leaving them with the nanny. Our first nanny was a lot older and she had lots of experience, but she unexpectedly quit on us. So we had to find another one. We decided to look for one of those nanny agencies. We ended up interviewing about five nannies, but my husband was set on one of them. And she was the youngest out of all of them, 18. Oh yeah. And the most attractive too. My husband told me that maybe we should try someone younger so that the kids can have fun and I said yes. The nanny would cover for me for about four hours a day when I was at work. Her and I started to get along really really well. She would tell me about her boy troubles and I would give her advice. Part two is up.
part two of how I caught my husband cheating on me with our very young nanny. This is not my story time. I sent him on Instagram. The nanny and I started to become really good friends. I even started telling her about the problems I was having with my husband. Little did I know that she was the problem. Like I said in part one, my husband travels a lot. This is what we would usually fight about. You see, it was actually really easy for him to travel less. All he had to do was pick a different region for his job. Instead of a six hour flight, it could have been a two hour trip. His excuse was that he would get paid less. When I was telling the nanny about our issues, she told me that I should just let it go and let my husband have his freedom. But the way she said it really bothered me. I ended the conversation and told her that she could go home. When my husband came home, I mentioned to him what the nanny said. I told him that I didn't like the way she told me that I needed to give him his freedom. He started to laugh and said, she's just a young girl. She's probably just saying what she thinks you need to hear. I decided to listen to my husband and I let it go. A week later, the nanny comes over to take care of the kids. By the way, as soon as she would come to my house, I would serve her a plate of food or make her anything she wanted before I left to work. She sat down to eat. I could see her messages on her phone and the name on the messages was the same as my husband's. I asked her why she was messaging my husband and she quickly put her phone in her purse. She didn't even know what to say. Part three is up. Part three of how I caught my husband cheating on me with our very young nanny. This is not my story time. I sent me on Instagram. When I asked her why she was messaging my husband on her phone, she did not know what to say. I asked her if she was okay. Then she replies with, I just needed some advice for my car. She was so nervous. I asked her to pull out her phone and give it to me. That's when she said no and started putting up a fight. She told me I had no right to check her phone, but I didn't believe her. I ripped her purse from her hands and grabbed the phone. Before I even have a chance to look at the messages, she starts calling me fat and old and that my husband is planning to leave me for her. Honestly, what she was saying didn't faze me because my goal was to look at the messages. And she was pretty much right. In the messages, my husband promised her to leave me for her and that he was sick of me and the kids. I begin to scroll up and see all of the pictures that they send each other. You can imagine what they were. By the way, the nanny was only a day from turning 18. Yep. Yep. Out of nowhere, she starts breaking plates and glasses and verbally abusing me. She even said that if I didn't leave him alone, that something bad would happen to me. I grabbed her by the arm and threw her out of the house. But I kept her phone, so I called my husband from the phone. When he hears my voice, he hangs up the phone. When he finally got home, we got into a six-hour fight. I made him leave the house, but apparently the nanny went crazy. She started stalking him and he had to get a restraining order against her. Serves him right. Her parents are threatening to press charges. I don't want my kids to grow up without a father, but I don't want to get back with him. What should I do? Three of how I caught my husband cheating on me with our very young nanny. This is not my story time. I sent him Instagram. When I asked her why she was messaging my husband on her phone, she did not know what to say. I asked her if she was okay. Then she replies with, I just needed some advice for my car. She was so nervous. I asked her to pull out her phone and give it to me. That's when she said no and started putting up a fight. She told me I had no right to check her phone, but I didn't believe her. I ripped her purse from her hands and grabbed the phone. Before I even have a chance to look at the messages, she starts calling me fat and old and that my husband is planning to leave me for her. Honestly, what she was saying didn't faze me because my goal was to look at the messages and she was pretty much right. In the messages, my husband promised her to leave me for her and that he was sick of me and the kids. I begin to scroll up and see all of the pictures that they send each other. You can imagine what they were. By the way, the nanny was only a day from turning 18. Yep. Out of nowhere, she starts breaking plates and glasses and verbally abusing me. She even said that if I didn't leave him alone, that something bad would happen to me. I grabbed her by the arm and threw her out of the house. But I kept her phone, so I called my husband from the phone. When he hears my voice, he hangs up the phone. When he finally got home, we got into a six-hour fight. I made him leave the house, but apparently the nanny went crazy. She started stalking him and he had to get a restraining order against her. Serves him right. Her parents are threatening to press charges. I don't want my kids to grow up without a father, but I don't want to get back with him. What should I do? Am I the asshole for moving to a hotel because my wife's family and insisted I sleep on the couch? My wife and I got married last summer and her family lives across the country from us. So I'd actually never visited, but I did meet them a handful of times and we've always gotten along fine. They invited us to come and stay with them for a few days and we took up on the offer. We flew in yesterday and everything went well. Her dad and I watched football and I caught up with her mom and sisters and then we had a nice dinner. But then they let us know they don't want us sharing a bed while in their home and they wanted me to sleep on the couch. I thought they were joking, but they insisted. I had a problem with the implication that I shouldn't be allowed to sleep next to my wife. Am I the asshole for moving to a hotel because my wife's family insisted I sleep on the couch? I also have a bad back and the couch did not look the least bit comfortable. After arguing back and forth, I decided to leave and book a hotel. I did tell my wife she did not have to come and she chose to stay and I said I'd come back the next day. The next morning, I called my wife asking when I should come by and she said her parents want me to apologize. I said I'd do it to keep the peace, but they need to acknowledge it wasn't appropriate to insist I can't share a bed with my own wife. She told me that not only will they not apologize for it, now they're insisting I come back and stay on the couch for the rest of the visit. And if I don't agree, I'm not welcome back. Am I the asshole for moving to a hotel because my wife's family insisted I sleep on the couch? My wife and I got married last summer and her family lives across the country from us. 
So I'd actually never visited, but I did meet them a handful of times and we've always gotten along fine. They invited us to come and stay with them for a few days and we took up on the offer. We flew in yesterday and everything went well. Her dad and I watched football and I caught up with her mom and sisters and then we had a nice dinner. But then they let us know they don't want us sharing a bed while in their home and they wanted me to sleep on the couch. I thought they were joking, but they insisted. I had a problem with the implication that I shouldn't be allowed to sleep next to my wife. Am I the asshole for moving to a hotel because my wife's family insisted I sleep on the couch? I also have a bad back and the couch did not look the least bit comfortable. After arguing back and forth, I decided to leave and book a hotel. I did tell my wife she did not have to come and she chose to stay and I said I'd come back the next day. The next morning, I called my wife asking when I should come by and she said her parents want me to apologize. I said I'd do it to keep the peace, but they need to acknowledge it wasn't appropriate to insist I can't share a bed with my own wife. She told me that not only will they not apologize for it, now they're insisting I come back and stay on the couch for the rest of the visit. And if I don't agree, I'm not welcome back. Am I the asshole for not buying a drink for my friends? I was out with a few friends the other day and we went to a restaurant for dinner. One of my friends is Muslim and is very strict about everything. For example, once one of her coworkers was smoking in the break room and she asked her to do it somewhere else. My friends wanted drinks and I saw that she looked to the ground and grimaced. So when the waiter came, I only asked for a few glasses of water and nothing else. My friend then interjected and asked for beer and I stopped the waiter and told him no. Just water please. Am I the asshole for not buying a drink for my friends? My friend asked for beer and I said no, actually just water. When he came back with the water, all of my friends piped up at me and started an argument about it. My friend who was Muslim, Fatima, was being silent but later told me she appreciated what I did. After dinner though, my friends left me with the bill and drove home. So, am I wrong? I should really add that these were my friends, not hers, and they met her once and asked her to come. Top comment says Fatima is allowed to practice her religion, but has no right to project her beliefs onto other people. I agree, but it was more of OP doing it. Am I the asshole for not driving an hour to bring my brother a bottle of my pee for a drug test? So my brother, 19 male, is a college athlete, and a few days ago he found out they were doing a drug test on the whole team and he was of course selected so he asked me if i could bring him a bottle of my pee because i'm the only person he knows that doesn't smoke or do any drugs also i'm the only person he could trust that wouldn't report him he's an hour away and i had other things to do that day and i knew he'd figure something out anyway so i told him no and he got mad at me and said i'm a bad sister and only thinking about myself he did figure it out but is mad at me for putting his career potentially at risk Am I the asshole for telling my neighbor to F off after she demanded I clean her house? I'm a Latina woman married to an American man and we live in a small community in Florida where most people are nice to me. I love cleaning, trying new products for fun, and a couple of times I've offered to clean other people's houses free of charge. One is a widower, one just had a baby, and another one just got into a car accident. A few days ago, I was sitting on my couch and I heard someone knocking on my door. A lady around 40 who I've never seen said it took you a while to open the door. I mumbled, huh? And she asked me in the most entitled tone, I want to know when you're going to clean my house for free. Am I the asshole for telling my neighbor to F off after she demanded I clean her house? She asked me in the most entitled tone when I was going to clean her house for free. I was trying not to laugh and asked why would I do that and she proceeded to mention all the houses I've cleaned. And she wanted to know why I didn't make it to her house yet. She then yelled at me loud enough to make my next door neighbor come outside and see what was going on. Simply because I wasn't replying to her. I was still trying to process her audacity to come to my house and demand I clean. I said I'm never going to clean your house and I've only helped a few people. She then demanded and I told her to F off. I have an autistic 14 year old daughter who has terrible hygiene. I have to fight with her to get her to shower, brush her teeth, and clean up after herself during her period. It is disgusting. Blood everywhere and the constant washing of her underwear. She sees no problem with her inability to clean herself up. I told her that people are going to bully her in school if she smells that bad and that it's hard to recover from that socially and she ignored me. Well, she had her period last week. 
I picked her clothing and allowed her to wear white pants. I wanted to see if she would clean up after herself so that the pants would be clean when she came back home. Before I could even drop her off, the pants were red. I stayed silent. I dropped her off like normal. She needed to learn how these types of situations will impact her social life if she continued to live like a slob. She came home in tears. The kids were ruthless. She was mocked for her strong smell and the red on her pants. It hurt me to see her like this, but I was not seeing the changes that had to be made. For the rest of the week, she took good care of herself. There were no stains, she showered herself, and would spray perfume to maintain a flowery scent. My husband and I fought about this though. He called me some very hurtful words because of my choice. He said I handled it poorly and that she'll probably be paying for this for the rest of the school year. However, I see it as a life lesson and it actually yields results on like my husband's soft approach. So am I in the wrong for setting up my daughter to be bullied in school? My boyfriend, Freddie, 30 male, and Callum, 29 male, have been best friends since college. They were roommates and graduated together and all that stuff. Me, 30 female, and Freddie have been dating for six years and we're getting married next January. We're incredibly happy and we can't wait to have a fabulous wedding. We both deal with anxiety because we have a very high profile and demanding jobs. So we agreed to have a small wedding, simple, relaxed, and stress-free. I've shared spaces with Callum at my boyfriend's family events, parties, and he hangs out with my boyfriend a fair amount of the time. He's great. I like him. Here's the issue though. Callum does this thing where he sits or stands very still and stares into space for a long, long, long time. Freddie told me it's a thing called catatonia. I call that just zooming out or disassociating as Gen Z said. The problem is that my boyfriend usually babysits him when this happens. I mean, he stays right next to him the whole time. I thought it was like a nice, cute gesture, but on the day of our wedding, I mean, really? That sounds like the opposite of our dream day. He's even taller than my boyfriend, so just imagine a 6'4 guy standing in the middle of our reception next to the groom. Here's the conflict. I talked this privately with Callum, just me and him, and he agreed that he would be a distraction. He declined the invitation. I asked him not to tell anything to my boyfriend, and he said that he would be too embarrassed to say anything. I said, please don't feel embarrassed. I know it's not your fault. And we left it at that, very friendly and politely. I told him that he's more than welcome to join us for our Christmas dinner, because I know that he's not close with his family. And like I said, I like him. I told my boyfriend that Callum declined, and he was disappointed, but he agreed that less guests fitted our idea with a small, low-key, relaxed wedding. So it was still perfect. The next day, I told my mom, my sister, and my maid of honor, and they were visibly upset with me. My mom said it was an a-holy move and that it was ableist, but I don't think that's true because it's not really a disability. I think it's more about his personality and his thing that I know is going to take a toll on my boy for that day. I want to make sure that I was not a horrible person to pass it on my conscience. So, am I in the wrong for uninviting a friend to my wedding so my boyfriend doesn't have to take care of him? Part 2. I uninvited a friend to my wedding so my boyfriend doesn't have to take care of him. I'm going to try to keep this simple. I was an ableist. I did something horrible to Callum. I did something unforgivable to him, actually. I took away his agency and I didn't see him as a person, the lovable person that my future husband cares so much about, and I did something horrible to the person that I love. The a-hole tag is right, and the advice that I got was so much appreciated. My first instinct should have been to speak directly to the two guys, the guy I love and the guy that my future husband loves. I was called out yesterday, and instead of going directly to them, my first thought was, oh, I need to learn from a reliable resource. I should talk to a doctor before talking to Callum. And it's fucked up that even after all of that happened, I was still thinking just about myself. My sister called me yesterday to offer her help again, and that was another wake-up call for me. I talked and apologized to Freddie last night. He was honestly more worried about Callum above anything else. He said he wasn't hurt by the lie. He always sees the best in others. That man's heart is too big for his own good. He just blamed my behavior on pre-wedding anxiety, but I told him that it was definitely more than that. I talked to Callum yesterday too, and he was kind enough to literally take an Uber and come to our place ASAP first thing in the morning, without any question. After I apologized, he was crying. Don't want to get into details, but he was clearly hurt by what I did. And at the same time, he was very relieved that my apology came rather quickly. He told me, I knew you had a good heart. I told him it took a whole village to wake me up. He apologized for downplaying his condition with me. He said he often does that to avoid freaking people out. That hit me like a brick. Cal and Fred shared some tears too. If the wedding happens, Callum will be there. From our long conversation, Freddie thinks that anxiety is too high right now, and he wants to hire a wedding planner to help manage the workload. I told him that I'm probably going to need therapy too, because I can't blame ableism, stupidity, and lack of empathy on being stressed out. We're not going to get married in January. The venue allows us to reschedule. We might do that if it's possible. That's the only thing that I know for certain. I feel like I failed at marriage even before starting, and I felt that loving my new family too. I got the quick Google search comment a lot, but if you Google catatonia, it says a group of symptoms with different possible reasons. Then it jumps straight ahead to heavy stuff. Like, at the time, when I Googled it, I thought it was a symptom. I didn't know the difference between syndrome and disease and condition. It sounds incredibly stupid to write this, but in my head, it wasn't different than people getting motion sickness. Cal and Fred always acted as if it was something usual, and it was something that you'd expect from time to time, so I definitely normalized that. Freddie's friend also acted that way, in the sense that every time Cal had an episode, they'd be like, oh, again? That's classic Cal. Oh damn, we can't leave the party because Callum is doing his thing. Cancel the Uber. You know, mostly joking about it. And of course, Freddie was always there to take care of him. Now I understand why that was so important. He's incredibly susceptible at that state and it can't be disturbed and he needs to be watched. Of course, Cal lives most of his life without Fred and when that happens when Fred is not around, so yeah, he has no choice but to be susceptible all by himself. I bit my boyfriend's member because he wouldn't stop head pushing, but now I feel really guilty. It didn't seem like a big deal at the time, but it's keeping me up. We've known each other for about six months and started hooking up in October. The head pushing has never been a problem until a few weeks ago. I don't mind a little, but he gets so aggressive that it hurts. 
I've communicated with him in more ways than one that I don't like how aggressive he is. I'll stop him when he's doing it just for him to resume not even a minute later. I told him during and outside of it, so I really don't think I could have been any more clear. Earlier today, I was going down on him and he started again. Like usual, I moved his hands off my head. I told him to be gentle. I told him it hurts when he does it all within five minutes. He just wouldn't stop. At first, I just bit down a little with my front teeth. That didn't work, so I bit the head with my molars. Not that hard, probably enough to break a baby carrot. He yelled and pushed me off of him and started asking what the hell was wrong with me. I told him that he's the one that can't do one single thing that I've asked him so many times not to do when I'm doing something for him. He kept telling me that it doesn't matter, that you should never do that to anyone, blah blah blah. We bickered for a couple minutes and he eventually left while calling me dirty names on his way out. I honestly wasn't expecting to do it. I'm just so tired of having my boundaries broken. I've been extremely clear and direct when telling him to simply not push my head. I don't understand why that's so hard to comprehend. Is there something that I'm not understanding? Does it make the head better? I just feel like I'm doing this one and only thing for him. I get no pleasure out of it. I don't even like doing it. It just feels so dirty and so disrespectful with the amount of times I have to ask him not to. But I can't help but to feel bad. I'm worried that I might have hurt him more than I intended to. I don't want to call or message him, but I don't even know where he is right now. I don't know if I should have taken a different approach to this because I don't know if our relationship will come back from this with how upset he was when he left. My fiancé left me after he found out about my college days. I've been with my fiancé for two years, engaged for two months. I can go on and on about how great he is, but I won't waste your time. He's awesome. Him and my sister's boyfriend have gotten really close over the past year, and they talk at least twice a week, whether on the phone or FaceTime, or just hanging out with all four of us. Sister has been dating her boyfriend since high school, so obviously her boyfriend knows me very well, as well as my dating history. Last weekend, we all thought it would be fun to drink and hang out over FaceTime. It was a FaceTime double date, and we all had a blast. Laughing, playing, drinking games. We all partied for over an hour, and that's when I was over it and decided to leave the party to call my sister directly without the boys in the other room. Well, my fiance and her boyfriend stayed on the FaceTime and continued to get drunk together. During this time, I couldn't hear shit because I was in another room and was talking to my sister. Sister's boyfriend goes and tells a bunch of stories about my college days and how many guys I hooked up with. Just so everyone knows, I don't know the actual number. My first three years of college was literally one giant party. Without being too descriptive, I admit I was excessive. But at that time, it was just what we did. I was single during that time and me and my friends with a lot of guys. Most of them that I couldn't even pick out in the lineup. But again, I was in college. Anyway, one of the parties that I went to, I ended up hooking with four different guys at the same time. This is relevant later. My fiance is handsome as fuck and I know for a fact that he's been with several women. We talked about our past a lot in the beginning of the relationship. I wasn't 100% honest with mine and I can only assume that he was. After everyone hung up, me and my fiance were laying in bed about to sleep when he just calmly asked me, did you get gangbanged in college? My response was, what the fuck? Why would you ask that? That's when he told me everything that my sister's boyfriend told him. He told me details I'm not even sure are 100% true because again, blur. But a lot of that information was accurate, so I just told him yes. It was one time. He continued asking questions about other stuff, but the gangbang thing kept coming up and he had a lot of questions about it that I answered to the best of my knowledge. Fast forward to Wednesday. Things have been fine and normal Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. But on Wednesday, radio silence. He hasn't texted or talked to me in three days. The breaking point was tonight when he came home from work and asked me, are you friends with any of the guys on Facebook? Again, not lying to him, I admitted yes. I was friends with all of them. He left a few hours ago and I have no idea where he is or what he's doing. I'm tempted to call the cops, but I feel like I will just make things worse. I feel like garbage. I fucking hate my sister's boyfriend right now, but maybe it's not even his fault. Maybe I should have been more honest. I'm so lost. He's the best thing to ever happen to me and I've never seen him like this before. Is this the end? He refuses to return my calls and texts. This is a story of the time that me and my childhood best friend almost got kidnapped. Just a warning, this could be triggering. I was around 10 years old and my neighbor down the street was about seven. All I remember is that it was getting dark outside and my parents told me that I should walk her home. It was about a three minute walk. So we're walking out of my house and down the street a little bit and we see a car pull up to us. It was a regular Sudan and it had tinted windows. I was a very paranoid kid so I told my friend to turn around. The car continued to follow us walk back to my house and a man pulled down his window and asked us if we needed a ride to where we were going. I immediately screamed and told my friend to run back to my house. So we ran back inside, told my parents, and my parents thought nothing of it. Mind you, I live in a pretty safe area, so I could see why my parents weren't that worried. I was also a very dramatic kid, but this wasn't me being dramatic. So we go back outside and we see that the car was pulled up another person's driveway, so we thought we were okay. I still told my friend to run. The car lights turn on and go down the driveway and tried to chase us, but we got home in time. This is a story about a badass bitch who literally rented a fucking hotel room just so that I could do her nails. So she started going to me when she lived in my town at my house. She moved about an hour away and it was really hard since I'm traveling to find a place where I could do her nails at. But she ended up texting me sometime last week saying that she didn't want to cheat on me and she really wanted her nails done by me so she was going to get a hotel in my town. So that's what that girl, that girl right there, that pretty ass bitch right there, that's what she did. She rented a hotel room in my town so that I could come to her. And if that doesn't scream, OG, supporter, I don't know what does. Like, don't even, if you're not like this, then don't even talk to me. 
nah, I'm playing. Like, if you if you move an hour away and you end up cheating on me, like, that's, that's like any relationship, so I understand. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That's fucked up. That's fucked up. But you see these shits, you see these Halloween ass, bougie ass nails, like, damn, like, they fit her, like, they look so good on her.